welcome back 40 Pinus and thanks for tuning in again. So I'm going to stick to the recipe and uh, I'm only going to change the fermentation temperatures and the amount of boiling water used. I'm using the American Pale Ale Kit and the Mangrove Jacks Liquid Malt Extract. These are for the best results but you can use any fermentables if you wish. Be careful when you cut and open the pouch as you're definitely going to expose the malt on the other side. <laughs> so inside you're going to find a sachet of mosaic and chinook hops sachet, the uh, full instructions and obviously the malt is on one side of the pouch and also a sachet of mangrove jacks yeast. It's really important you fully clean and sanitise all of your homebrew equipment that will come in contact with your brew before you start. This is probably one of the most important steps of all homebrew making. I've included a link above to one of my cleaning videos to help you get started. Put both of your pouches upright in a saucepan or such and fill up with boiling water then leave for 5 to 10 minutes. We do this to make the malt easier to pour. Empty both pouches into your fermenter and put some hot water in each to get the last dregs out. Then add between 1.5 to 2.5 litres of boiling water depending on how cold your water is. For instance, in the summer your tap water is obviously going to be warmer than it is in the winter. Then you need to stir it all till it's all diluted. So if you're going to be using brewing sugar you can uh, whack that instead in now. Um, if you're going to be using DME instead you uh, want to be putting that in your fermenter first and then just diluting that with one litre of cold water before you add your pouch. You now want to add cold water up to the 23 litre mark. If your tap water is not chlorine and you actually drink it then just use this but if yours does taste chlorine um, then you really want to be using filtered water but just please don't use distilled water. You then want to stir your work vigorously to put in as much air in as possible as this will help your yeast grow. You now want to take a 100ml work sample. I'm using this wine thief. Then you want to record your temperature. Mine is 20.5 degrees. You're aiming for below 25 degrees Celsius. If it's higher, then you really need to cool in an ice bath, etc. before you pitch your yeast. I've included a link in the description so you can get your temperature adjusted hydrometer reading. You want to record this reading in your brew log. A typical reading like mine here, using LME, is 1051. So sprinkle the yeast over the top of your brew and then fit your lid securely, install your airlock and thermowell if you're using one. For best results you want to ferment between 18 to 21 degrees centigrade, preferably in a fermentation chamber if you have one, or you can use a room with a constant temperature within those ranges. Fermentation should take around two weeks. But after seven to eight days, take a hydrometer reading using the adjusted link in the description. You're looking for a reading of 1025 or below for LME or 1020 or below for brewing sugar before you can add your dry hops. If the readings are higher, just leave it for another one to two days and then test again until they are.
You can use a hop bag to put the hops in if you wish, or just add directly to your brew like I do. Then you just need to buy a siphon hose filter if you wish. On days 11 and 12, take your final gravity measurement. The readings need to be the same for two days to show fermentation has stopped. When fermentation has stopped and your readings are the same, you can now add beer finings or cold crash or both, and then leave for another two days to help clear your brew. You're now ready to batch prime and bottle your brew. I've included a link above to help you. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell for future videos. Stay safe.